I had worked late at my job today, but now I was driving home very comfortably in an amazing car. I had not worked late because I'm very ambitious. I had worked late because I wanted to drive this car tonight. I'm not very rich and I could never afford this car either, but it was my luck that an innocent customer left their precious wagon at our workshop today. I spent all day fixing the car just so I can have a ride with it. I am a car mechanic driving home in a Bentley, I think to myself. Then my eyes spot an elegant lady by the road, holding out her hand to be taken somewhere. As I hold the car next to her, she does not look happy, but actually impressed as she musters the car, almost confused. I let her in and she doesn't say a word while beholding the interior with genuine interest. You have a really nice car, she compliments me. I thank her. Is this a Ferrari? She asks me. No, this is a Bentley, I reply. She looks around herself in the car and says, Bentley? Never heard of it. Silence fills the room as she examines the inside of the car. Then, my name is Mary, she introduces herself and looks at me. So, Mary, will you tell me where I should take you? She starts laughing as she admits that she completely forgot about going home. Her laugh infects me and we start a little conversation about going home late from work at night and other hobbies that we seemingly share. She usually drives home in her own car, but I lent my car to a friend for the weekend. That must be a close friend, I state. Actually, I don't know him all that well, she realizes and starts laughing lightheartedly. Then you must be a very trusting person, I think loudly and smile at her. How could you tell, she asks and continues. Did the fact that I entered a stranger's car at night give it away? She looks at me, clearly expecting a smart answer. A good detective never discloses such information during an ongoing investigation, I reply and smirk. I can't wait for the results of your investigation, detective, she smirks back. After an enjoyable conversation about crime thrillers, we arrive at her place and she leaves the car. How can I tell you? My question stops her. She turns around. Tell me what? Well, the results of my investigation, I point out. How will you even continue your investigation? She asks me, smiling. I am planning to still have a car tomorrow and you will have a need for a ride home, isn't that true? I answer with a shameless grin on my face. She is speechless. I can see that she is even a bit shocked, but soon her face lights up and she adds, I will have a need for dinner as well. A restaurant is a fantastic place to hold my investigation at, I remark and nod. She winks at me, turns around and walks away. At her doorstep, she turns around one last time, smiles at me, then she disappears behind the door. Out of all the things I imagined could happen to me for stealing a car from my workplace, this was not one of them. I am not prepared. The next day I ask all my co-workers to lend me some money so I can afford a once-in-a-lifetime date with a genuinely delightful lady. My co-workers help me. I am lucky. Again. She wears a colorful dress with flowers and smiles happily as I arrive to pick her up. I take her to one of the best restaurants in town and we have one of their most expensive wines, while two waiters serve us plates with the best food. Somehow I manage to achieve the impossible while living the unbelievable. Her eyes light up in disbelief as the waiters remove the plate covers in front of us. With a wide smile on her face, she raises her wine glass and we toast. I see nothing but kindness in her eyes. Her every smile comes from the heart. I suspect her to have a playful nature and am confirmed in my beliefs when she tries to drink her wine with our glass holding arms crossed. She puts down her glass and asks me if I am allowed to drink at work. Of course I'm not allowed to drink at work. Why do you ask? My heart drops a beat as I worry that she might ask me all about my career and I hope she won't force me to make up a story. I thought you were holding an investigation here, detective, she states. My worries vanish and I quickly reply, it's an undercover investigation. I cannot let the suspect know that I am at work. The suspect, she puffs. What kind of an investigation is this? You're asking a lot of questions for somebody who is suspected of theft, I note. Thievery? She starts laughing out loud and leads back on her chair. I'm starting to wonder if my accusation was actually that funny and she notices my confused view. You wouldn't get the irony, she says. She's right. I don't get it. We enjoy the meal and the talks in between. It's a wonderful experience. Once we're finished, I suggest to go for a walk and she agrees. I take her to a beautiful place in the city, in the Bentley and the radio is running in the background. Then they play my favorite song and she turns up the volume while singing. I look at her, but she looks into all directions and the song just comes to life in her voice. I cannot help myself and chime in. She starts looking at me, we sing together. She raises her hands to dance with the music. I cannot hold it, literally. I let go of the steering wheel to join her. The song is just rousing. We are the only car on the road, 
Quickly, she holds the steering wheel in position out of worries that something might happen, and the car changes the lane, but she pulls it back. Are you drunk? She asks, laughing. How could I be drunk at work? I answer jokingly. You will cause a car crash, she warns me in a caring way. These new cars do not just change lanes as they please, especially not at this speed. I raise my hands from the steering wheel once more. You see? The car holds the lane. You are priceless, she realizes loudly and smiles resigned. Nothing happens, and we laugh. Eventually the song is over and we arrive. The night is cold, but lit up by all the lanterns and the lights of the city and the cars. We walk. She feels cold, so she takes my arm and puts it around her shoulder. That's better, she says, and starts holding my waist. Yes, a very trusting person, I mumble. She just looks at me and smiles. I think I can trust you, she says, kindly smiling. The way the car can trust you, she giggles. Yes, cars trust me very easily, and I never disappoint them, I claim. I know, she says. I like your car. Do you think your car likes me? I'm sure that Bentleys have a thing for elegant ladies like you, I state. Yes, I am an elegant lady. Well spotted. She pauses for a moment. But sometimes I miss being a child. What do you mean, I ask. She takes my hand and starts walking funnily on the curb, like children do sometimes. I have not walked like this in ages, she says. Judging how old you look, it cannot be that long, I tease her. Stop pulling my leg, she commands while standing on the curb and with a disappointed look on her face. I'm not pulling your leg, I respond. I'm holding your hand. She starts laughing. You're so childish. Maybe. But now it's my turn on the curb. I gently push her on the sidewalk and start walking funnily on the curb while pulling her behind me. She laughs wholeheartedly while catching up with me. So, do you think that I did it? She asks me. Did what? Theft. I think you're innocent, I say. Which is why I'm closing this investigation now. She looks satisfied with this answer. Very satisfied. Maybe I am not innocent, she hisses and pulls out two brand new finger guns pointing them directly at me. I had a feeling. Quickly I draw my own finger guns and point them at her. I thought you were a detective. Why do you have guns? She interrupts the play. I am a double agent. She laughs out loud. The irony is killing me. She calms down quickly and adds... The cold is also killing me. Can I have your scarf? She does not wait for an answer, grabs one end of my scarf and puts it around her neck. Not enough, she states and starts spinning around to get more of my scarf. The scarf ends here for you. I smile at her. Only a few centimeters are between us and we look at each other. Every end is a new beginning, she whispers. Silence. She comes closer and so do I. We kiss. One moment that defines this evening. Beautiful love within me. I hold her and we start dancing slowly and romantically. We dance like this for a while, holding each other very close, until she grows tired. We go back to the car, I drive her home, she waves goodbye on her last steps to the door of her apartment building. I cry inside, but I smile back. I know that this was the last time I can take her out on a nice date with this car. She will realize I am not who she thinks I am. I did not pretend anything, I did not lie or steal anything. She kissed me because she wanted to kiss me. It was the most beautiful evening I ever had and ever will have. But I did have it and I will keep it in my heart forever. What a wonderful lady Mary was to me. I will not forget. I feel sad, yet fulfilled. I go home. It's the next day, I am at work. My boss comes and tells me that the owner of the Bentley wants to pick their car up and he needs me to drive it to the front of the workshop. I nod. I sit in the car. I look to the seat on my right where she sat, with her beautiful hair, her warmly smile, her playful nature. I internalize everything that reminds me of her and of that evening we shared. This is the moment I have to say goodbye to Mary, but she does not know, and I cannot tell her. I am paralyzed. After a few minutes, I drive the car out to my boss. The owner is standing in front of him. I hold out the keys as I approach them and she turns around. It's her. It makes my voice faint. I just stand there holding the key and look at her. Mary has come to pick up the car. My boss reads the billing in detail to her. She looks at me shy of any words. She bites her lips. Seemingly she feels just as guilty as I do. I remember our conversations. Bentley, never heard of it, she said. I lent my car to a friend for the weekend, she said. I realize now what she meant, and I realize the irony she was talking about when I accused her of theft while sitting in her car, using it as my own. 
I start laughing out loud and she laughs with me. You have let me drive your car while not holding the steering wheel? Why? I ask. I am a very trusting person, she replies laughing. You do not regret trusting me, I continue. Well, you see, she says and pulls out her finger guns. I am not so innocent myself. My boss looks absolutely confused as he sees his client pulling out finger guns on his employee. You are a double agent, I say thoughtfully. She answers with a cute grin on her face. Yes, I was a double agent the entire time.